James is ready to take he's a freaking the, nap uh, back he's there. He's gonna like, have his feet up in the next uh, segment. Can I take it my is, shoes it is, off? That's what it is. It's we need a new fan. You know we've had guests take their shoes off and like just yeah. lounge? Uh, yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I would ask them also to not do that. You're like, could you not? Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. We are back with part two with the awesome James Murray of Abrams Artists. Let's get buzzed, you guys. You actually were an agent in New York. Yes. Correct. And now you're in the you know LA branch mm -hmm. doing LA. Is there a big difference uh, in how you operate in yeah. the both places? There's differences in terms of the areas that we work on. You know, New York is still such a commercial driven mm -hmm. town. Yeah. Whereas here, there's still a ton of commercial work that we do, but it's the, generally the work is a little bit more diversified, whether it's video games or television animation or feature animation. Promos and stuff are both on um, both coasts. But I think the biggest difference is New York is still very much an out-of-house casting director-driven town. Right. Whereas here in Los Angeles, I would say probably 85% of the work that we do, we do out of our booth. Which is, which is, you know, it, it, it's a gift and a curse, right? It's a gift because I do get to see my clients every day. I do, there are plenty of days where myself or other members of my staff um, alongside our audio engineer are in the booth directing, editing, and recording. Yeah. And, and there is something really, really special about that. But then on the flip side, you're maybe not always having those direct conversations with, right. with the client or with whoever, you know, whether it's Pizza Hut or Pepsi or whoever it is. Mm -hmm. So there's always that added difficulty of an extra level of communication. But our business model is pretty straightforward and it's really, really user friendly. You know, when we have an audition for somebody and they want to come to our office, we send it to them. They have all the information uh, and then they can schedule a time to come into our office that's convenient for them. Yeah, it's such a treat when you get to go somewhere for an audition. It's like, oh, I get to go somewhere. It's fun. <laughs> like yeah. it's a nice, it's, it's definitely more of a, of yeah. a an anomaly than it used to be. Well, I'm always trying to encourage people, like, yeah. come over. I was like, if you live in the valley, come over the hill, come yeah. see yes, us. Yeah. Yes. You know, it's always nice to see people. I have a question for you in regards to uh, uh, Abrams and how you guys position yourself. Um, it, it, the, the business of voiceover, um, I've been in the business of voiceover longer than you have, so I've seen like changes that you'd be like, really, that happened? But you've heard stories. Yeah. Um, and things are changing uh, still even on a weekly basis. What do you feel that Abrams is doing or does to stay competitive in that agent world? Well, since sort of the dissolvement, I guess, if you will, for lack of a better term, of voice bank, you know, there's so many different casting platforms that has really fragmented the community, Yeah. right? Uh, and, you know, I came up through voice bank and it was very, I'm realizing now how convenient and accessible that yes. was. Uh, but with that really no longer in existence, we have made it a point, all of us, all of the agents in our department to really, really do a lot of outreach and be proactive so that we can recapture as much of the market share of the commercial castings as we can mm -hmm. and really develop and build those relationships. Uh, you know, whether it's traveling to different cities and sitting down and talking to the advertising executives about how we can help them meet their needs or really listening yeah. mm -hmm. to what people are looking for. You know, I think it's very easy to get something with an age and a spec and send yeah. people. It's something else to really develop those relationships and be able to pick up the phone and know that you're gonna get some insights that maybe somebody else are not gonna get that mm -hmm. gives you the ability to kind of stay ahead of the curve as best as you That's can. That's really cool, yeah, man. Yeah. I'm happy to hear that because I've always felt that that was the one little missing element with some of the agencies out there um, that they're not being as proactive as they can be in building relationships because mm -hmm. now that we live in an, er in an age where lacks building relationship, these people are going through different sources where they're not really being serviced properly. Totally. And you guys have everything you need to service them properly, but they don't know that. Yeah, I mean, it's outreach. Totally. Right? It's outreach, it's marketing. I mean, yeah. it, 
It's phone sales that I learned from that yeah, ass sales job. Sales. There it is. Oh, the there it is. It served magazine. me well. Yay. It's just, you know, it's picking up the phone or and, and getting somebody on the line and introducing yourself and just being friendly and yeah. easy to work with. You know, as fast paced as everything is, the most important thing that I can do, I think, as an agent is be accessible, uh, is be easy to work with, is be friendly so that the buyer knows whether it's commercial or animation or whatever it is that if they call me, they're going to get me on the phone, they're going to get their questions answered, they're going to get what they need, and they're going to be able to move on with their day. Yeah. 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 And most importantly, because you just and you just mentioned it, they're going to get exactly what they need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And take a lot fewer steps yeah. to get it to. Yeah. Try to just Very make cool. it as easy yeah. as possible. You know, the business is changing so much. It's always evolving. But what are some challenges and some highlights of being an agent in this time, in this place? I think definitely a work-life balance, you know, mm -hmm. not necessarily, there's not really too many business challenges I can think of that are striking me as like being brand new, but the constant flux of information and always needing to be available, needing to be accessible, needing to do, uh, to be able to service those buyers, you know, yeah. that's, it's, it can be difficult at times to kind of create that balance so that you don't get burnt out so that you can actively service your town and you know right. and be there for them when they need you but you know I, I, I again I think one of the most rewarding things is when you get to know somebody and not only know what they can do but why they're doing it yeah and then help them to succeed you know that's how you build long-lasting relationships and that's I don't know. I think it's a really noble thing to be of service to people in any way that we can. And I have found a way to be of service to people. And, you know, that is just tremendously rewarding on a daily Absolutely. basis. Yeah, yeah. When James is not being an agent, yes. what's he doing? Talk about yourself sleeping. like you're not yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, James is not being like, an I don't agent know there's ever or time. sleeping. What yeah. is he doing? Are you working out? Yeah, I try to hobby? stay pretty active. I try to stay pretty active. I played rugby for many years. Nice. Um, and although I've given that up, well, I do try to. I try to stay pretty active. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I see you got a couple guitars. I play a little bit of guitar. Oh, cool, dude! Nice. You want to jam? I can grab I'm, a couple. No. Admit, and maybe off camera. I don't, <laughs> All right. I'm trying to, I'll embarrass myself with this. I won't do it with the music. All right. So if you had to choose between playing guitar on or camera singing. or or doing voiceover copy, which would you choose? I'll take the guitar. Give, okay. give James some more voiceover copy. No. Um, Cool, oh, man. And do you, um, uh, are there any, like, are you a collector of anything? Like, you know, do you geek out on any particular? Okay, so this, Here is, we go. So yeah. this is a funny story, right? So if anybody that comes into my office, I've got this, like, plethora of these action figures, right? Nice. And it's not anything that I, like, meant to collect. I just, the first year that I was here, I was at San Diego Comic-Con. And I went down, and for those of you that have not been at Comic-Con, uh, you know, unbeknownst to me when I first got there, it is basically a giant toy store. Yeah, I went Crazy. a little off the rails <laughs> and I bought a bunch of uh, like a bunch of different action figures and video games. But this is actually a pretty funny story. I'm a huge Ghostbusters fan. OK, oh, nice. and I bought this. I can't believe I'm going to say this. I bought this <laughs> like 118th die cast metal of the Ecto-1. You oh, did not. I bought it. Yes. I bought it, and it was it was it was it was expensive. And I bought it, and bought and you know if you're down there for Comic Con. By the time you get home, it's a long weekend. But I was very excited. <laughs> and I break this thing out, and it's missing a piece. Oh no! And I'm like, I can catch myself. Like I'm starting to get upset, and I'm like, I'm like, you're a grown man about to have a temper tantrum <laughs> over a giant Hot Wheels. Like you need to control yourself. <laughs> it's like, well, let me email them. So I pull out my computer. I find the email. And I'm like. I bought this for my son and it's missing this for piece. For my son. <laughs> exactly. Ah. And they're like, all right, we'll just send it back. <laughs> I send it back and like six weeks later, I just get a refund. And I, let me tell you, it was a roller coaster of emotions for me for this that's thing. Very, highs and highs. Oh. That's very stressful. Would you have rather that's have had the part? Yeah, of course right? yes. I would have. But you know, oh. at, at that point I was like, it's like, I don't know, man, maybe well, this is a sign. That's hysterical. But over the course, you know, I go down every year and I buy a couple of these action figures. And maybe for your birthday this year, oh, somebody will. Don't toy with my emotions. Well, now that we put it out there, maybe no, people will start sending some you action know, somebody figures. Somebody shows up with a full-size one in a, uh, okay. in a jumpsuit, you, know, I might, you might see that floating around the internet. <laughs> I love it. I love oh, it. Oh, my goodness what, gracious. Um, 
what questions are you tired of being asked about your livelihood and the business? And There's nothing that jumps out at me that I'm like, oh, this again. I find myself happy to have these conversations because I really I do really, really love what I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think in some small way it's, it's really impactful, you know. Once I made a comment to somebody that I was like, well, we're not saving lives here, you know? And yeah. and they made a counterpoint. It was like, well, you're doing your part to create content that you never know might save somebody's life. And now, right. and that was really like an, oh, it was like kind of an aha moment mm-hmm. that sort of helped to reaffirm what it is that we were doing, you know? I think if you look at it, sort of objectively and take a you know sort of a a large view of the scope of what we do and what we touch you know it means so much to so many people you know i spent a weekend in chicago for star wars convention all right mm-hmm. i'm not a huge star wars fan it was cool to be there but i'm not a very big star wars fan you so didn't i didn't, buy quite, any stuff I didn't there. quite get um well i'm not going to comment on that <laughs> but see, going there and seeing what that IP and that franchise means to so many people, mm-hmm. that gets you right in the feels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That gets you right in the feels. Yeah. It does, man. Yeah. It's so rewarding. Yeah. 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 It, it, and I think it's, it's definitely a statement on, you know, being kind, taking that extra step because you don't know what someone's life is and what that kind word or that email or what that can do and how that can really shift somebody's totally entire perspective. No, I think that's, you know, that's something that I'm actively always trying to keep kind of keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Being from New York, I've come out here and I've softened up a little bit and I don't Mm -hmm. necessarily think that's a bad thing. Yeah. I'm from New York too. Oh yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So you know. With so soft you know. Virgos. So you know. Virgo New Yorkers. Yeah. It's uh, uh, yeah. It's important. New Yorkers are important. nice. When people say like New Yorkers aren't nice, we're nice. We're nice people. Oh, you we're guys, direct. You guys yeah. can. We're nice and direct. We're direct. We're nice, people. We're nice I, and direct. But I appreciate that because out here, you know, a lot of times it's like everyone says yes, whether it's going to happen or not. But when a New Yorker or on the East Coast, when you say yes, you know, because you can also say no. Yeah. No. It's uh. So it's important. Yeah. But again, it's, you know, creating boundaries too. Completely, (laughs) completely. True. Well, I mean, with social media, um, such a presence, I mean, how do you keep boundaries? Because everyone's friends. We're all friends. Oh, I just, you know, I observe. I try not to engage. If if I'm going to post something on social media myself personally, it's mainly hoping to get a laugh Mm -hmm. out of somebody, you know. I tr- you can't take that stuff too, too, too do, seriously. Do you talk to yeah. the talent that you represent in regards to how they should or should not behave uh, social media? Wise? No, I mean, if they put something egregious or that I'm like, all right, that's a bad look, then maybe I'll, I'll have a conversation with somebody. But no, yeah. not really. I, I get, I'm of the school of thought that we are all adults and you have to behave like such. Um, and so... You know, I try not to be too overbearing. I feel like if somebody needs guidance, you know, if there's a specific show or something that somebody wants to post about and they need guidance, that's different. Yeah. But just a general, you know, sort of image thing. Yeah. I don't, I really tend not to get involved. Yeah. Uh, if people ask me, like if I have, if, if people have questions about if stuff that they should be doing, I think the one thing I always sort of default on is like fan engagement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're lucky enough to be involved in a property that's got fans and they want to engage with you, it is your responsibility and obligation to engage with those fans. Yeah. yeah. So James, you seem like a really cool, down to earth, level headed, <laughs> mild tempered, True uh, or false? Fellow. It's <laughs> true. I, I see it that way. No, I think no, I well, agree. I second that. Right? Yeah. Don't you second that? <laughs> is it hard to get to tick you off? Or what does somebody have to do or not do to get you to the point where you're like, where are those buttons, ticked off? James? <laughs> because I, I got, we got to know a little bit about that side of James, man. <laughs> oh, There's man. Gotta be something. I, there, are, there are certain things <laughs> that I tend to get irrationally angry over. <laughs> we know toys are a big <laughs> one. Well, I'm passionate, not bad. angry. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, 
when technology doesn't work the way it's supposed to. But I think that's really because I'm like seeing myself become my parents. And I'm like, I'm like, how I can't, I like, can't figure this out. Uh, I get very frustrated over that. Um, yeah, you know, I think, I'm, I, you know, I'm very type A and very organized. So if things do not fall in line a certain way, I'm very particular. Yes. Uh, for a reason, you know. Um, and if having to explain that to somebody over and over again and they're, not getting it for the sake of not caring to get it, that drives me up a wall. Yes. You know, yes. like I understand it's a business. We're all doing a thousand things at once. I understand, you know, mistakes get made. But in terms of like the way that I try to manage my staff, it was like, you know, I'll give you slack and leeway if you care. If I can see visibly that you're, in, that you're engaged uh, in what it is that we're doing, if that you're involved, if there's a level of, just you know a level of care because we are essentially in customer service right yeah. and i think that's you know that i think that is something our clients feel on a daily basis mm -hmm. you know, absolutely we're super familial with our clients and so i think be, that's because everybody that is as on our staff really really cares but if i ever get like a sort of lackadaisical attitude or a lack of caring you know that watch that out. Me out absolutely yeah. he's coming for you i lose yeah. it I'm going to ask you a quick question here about, and, and, and that maybe we haven't asked you, but, and this is more geared for maybe people out there that are starting out in this sure. business and they want to get them off on the right foot. Is there any advice besides what we've talked about that you would give somebody who's out there and they're trying to do things the right way in order to eventually have success in this business? What advice could you leave them with? I would say focus on the craft first and foremost you know if you're in a community that has an acting community that has you know a small local theater or there's a place maybe that you can just do any type of acting get out there and do it you know this business the way things are going everything you know what once was siloed is no longer and everybody because of social media because of the internet because of technology, everybody is kind of cross-pollinating. I see it day in and day out. So I, for people that do voiceover only or really only want to do voiceover, that's great. And you, can, you should continue that goal. But if you're building a foundation, if you're going to be a voice actor, you need to have that acting foundation. So any way that you can get in front of a microphone, in front of a camera, in front of a stage, in front of friends, whatever that is, you have to be doing the thing. Yeah. Always just just always be doing the thing and, and, and trying to create content. Don't worry about getting famous. Don't worry about getting rich. Don't worry about any of that stuff. The fruits that will eventually come of the labor. It's just always, it's all, all, all about the craft. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Is there um, a question that we haven't asked you that you wish we would? I don't think so. No. I don't know. I mean, there's so much that we could talk about. Yeah. I got a question that probably nobody's ever asked you. You ready for this one? Yes. yes. Why the heck are you so cool? Mm. He's from New trying York. To, you know what? Because I'm like borderline hypertension and I'm trying to keep it down. <laughs> My doctor tells me I need to keep it down a little bit. No, I got to say, man. I yes. mean, obviously, you know, we've spoke on the phone, you know, a few times and stuff like that. And, um, but you're you're a really cool guy. You're great people. Like I you know, that. you you definitely know what you're talking about when it comes to the business. But above and beyond that, you're just a stand up great guy. So thanks. For well, that. I, I appreciate that, and I have to I have to commend you on doing a service because I have watched many of these, and there are things that I have picked up from other agents, other talent that are on here. So oh, I think thanks. you guys are definitely doing a service. For Thank you, man. I appreciate that. that. Yeah. That's Thank really, that. really cool. Um, this is the mystery question, James. Uh oh. Okay. Pick a card so pick and a card read it as your favorite character. As your favorite promo. I'm gonna man. get him to do. I'm gonna get uh, him. To he's do. not gonna take the bait, Chef. <laughs> oh, he's not. He's like, might. I'm not doing it. All right. Read it as your favorite client. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing. I gotta do a different one. Okay. I can't do this. One. <laughs> I can't do that one. I can't do this one. <laughs> Would be too real. <laughs> What would you like your great great grandchildren to know about you? There we go. That I'm doing my small part for the climate. That I'm trying not to leave them a, a terrible, With terrible nothing. planet. Yes. Um, just you know, do always try to do the right thing. I've always tried to do the right thing. Not always been successful, 
but I've always tried to do the right thing. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? So many times doing the right thing is the hardest thing. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. But it is the right In thing. In the long run, that's, that's it, it makes life easier. Yeah. 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 You got to be okay with yeah. yourself. Did you ever get advice along the way in your life that has stuck with you that you've... Yes. I actually, this is, this is a good question. I've got a couple of pieces that I've tried to really hone and kind of take, mm -hmm. take in, right? It's just because something is not your fault does not mean it is not your responsibility. Mm. So, you know, we as agents, we wear so many different hats and are constantly having to problem solve yep. right. uh, or just handle situations that through no fault of our own have come to fruition, but mm -hmm. it always presents itself with an opportunity to take responsibility and show people, be a leader and show people how to, how to handle that situation as best you can in whatever way. And, you know, that's something that I've always really, really tried to emulate as best as possible. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, and then the other one is, don't tell me why you need a raise. Tell me why you deserve a raise. Ah, yeah, that one. I've I heard that a couple times on the come That's up. That's a good one. I've heard that a couple times on the come up, and I'll tell you what. Anytime anybody asks me for more money, I'm like, well, this is what I owe. It's my default. Yeah, it's yeah. good though. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, I love that. I mean, because everybody needs a raise. Well, yeah, but, but not everybody, everybody deserves it. Exactly. Yeah, not everybody deserves it. Very right cool. on. Spoken yeah. like the, the commander in chief of the ship. James Abrams. Murray, man. Yes. Um, Freaking cool guy. Thank you so much for all you That's do. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. This pleasure. is a joy. Put it there, buddy. It's my pleasure. Um, you, you look good on the couch. You're welcome here anytime. This is a nice couch. <laughs> Thank you so this much. Is He's taking the couch. This home. was a good off season pickup for you guys. I love it. Well, that concludes our two part episode with the very cool, very handsome, and very mm -hmm. awesome Mr. Yes. James Murray of. Abrams Talent Agency here in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen. Hey, we're going to be back next week with another episode for you, so check it out. Yes, you guys, we love you. Thank you so much for watching. Follow all of us on social. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time for a little buzz. buzz. Yeah! James Murray, Abrams Artist Agency. I just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy. And just remember, this whole thing is all about accountability. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit demosthatrock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.